nanometer is really tiny, so if you want to see something that's just a few nanometers big, you can't use your eyes and you can't even use optical microscopes. So you have to have new tools, and these new tools are called scanning probe microscopes. So let's look at how scanning probe microscopes might work with these analogies. We're going to take a look at mapping mini mountains here. Reach in this box and tell me what you feel on the surface. You can also feel other things, like friction. So if you reach into this box, what is the shape of the rough area that you feel inside? Stiffness is another thing that you can feel with your fingers. So if you poke your finger on the surface inside of this box, you'll end up feeling hard areas and soft areas. So it turns out that you can learn a lot about a surface without actually even looking at it. And that's kind of the basis behind scanning probe microscopes. Well, for the scanning probe microscopes, you're not actually using your finger. You're actually using a cantilever. So I have another example that gives this idea. So let's try this experiment. Here's your probe strip. It's kind of like a cantilever beam. And we're going to use the tip of the probe to investigate this very big refrigerator magnet. I want to have you drag the probe strip horizontally and vertically and tell me what you think the arrangement of the north and south poles are of this magnet. So what do you think the arrangement is? Is it one big uniform north pole? Is it stripes of north and south poles? Or is it a checkerboard pattern of north and south poles? It turns out you're right. It's a stri it's striped arrangement. When we glide along this way, we're gliding along one of the of these stripes of the poles. But when we go this way, we're hopping up and down across the north and the south. It turns out you can also move things around on surfaces with probe. This experiment shows that I'm able to move this little particle along a surface with my probe strip. In this famous experiment by Don Eigler at IBM, he used a scanning probe to move iron atoms around into a circle. Here we see he's nudging the iron atoms along, and he's trying to create a circle of atoms to make a quantum corral. Here are some of the quantum corrals that Don Eigler was able to make. In this one, you can see the circle of, of atoms, and inside it almost looks like waves on water, almost like if he dropped a pebble in the middle of a puddle. Well, it turns out what you're seeing there is the quantum nature of materials. And we're seeing waves of electrons that are um, corralled inside of this ring of atoms that he's made with a scanning probe microscope. One of the greatest breakthroughs for nanotechnology happened in the early 1980s. It's the ability to use a scanning probe microscope to investigate surfaces. Some of these microscopes can even see individual atoms. In this image that was created in Professor Max Legale's lab here at the University of Wisconsin, we're imaging a silicon surface and we can actually see the individual bumps of atoms, as well as lines of atoms that are um, on the surface. There's also terraces uh, that you can see here. These three terraces are all um, separated by just one atomic layer difference in height. You can measure a lot of different things with scanning probe microscopes. You can measure topography uh, of a surface, like this mapping many mountains. You can also measure things like friction and stiffness with different kinds of scanning probe microscopes. And you can even measure magnetic field with, a, with scanning probe microscopes. These tools are really important for being able to do nanotechnology. They allow us to learn about surfaces, but they also allow us to manipulate surfaces so that we can create nanoscale devices.